You're Human and You Written by Mad Max the Black Interlude Rainbow Dash's Stunt Day, Part 1 Today I was lying on the grass as the wind blew over my face, causing the grass and leaves to sway gently in the breeze. I was near the ever-free forest with Rainbow Dash, since Twilight had to run an errand in Canterlot. She apparently decided to make someone take care of me. She figured that it would look bad if she just left me alone for the whole day, so she asked her friends for help. Personally, I think it was to get back at me for the prank I pulled on her. Seriously, it wasn't that bad of a prank. Not like I was press my foot down on the scale when she was weighing herself. She should have known that she wasn't actually 300 pounds. I think it's hardly my fault she overreacted. The first bunny she asked was Fluttershy, but the Pegasus was too busy with her other animals to look after me. A bear had hurt his paw and needed her attention and some baby bunnies needed tending to as well. Seeing as she had her hooves full, Twilight just thanked her and moved on to the next candidate. Next on the list was Pinkie Pie, who was unfortunately out on some party. Mrs. Cake said that she could look after me, but neither I, nor Twilight, liked the look the mature mare was giving me. In fact, Twilight practically yanked me away from the store and away from Mrs. Cake. As I was pulling along, I noticed that Mrs. Cake was pouting as she looked at me, before she turned around and with a flick of her tail, trotted back inside the bakery. Uh, but not before flashing me her damp privates again. Her swollen, milk-filled teeth swayed underneath her as she went inside. I shuddered, knowing that I had just dodged a bullet with that one. Why the hell can't her husband take care of her needs? She clearly needs him badly. Turning my head back around, I saw Twilight looking at me, then back to the shop. She had a neutral look on her face, but her eyes glinted slightly, giving away her distaste. She just harumphed and dragged me along, mumbling something I couldn't quite hear. We both agreed Rarity didn't need visiting, considering what she thought of humans. I don't know why she was so afraid of humans, but I wonder if there was something I could do. I'm really bothered by her fear and disapproval of me. When Twilight spoke with Applejack, at just the mention of my name, she proceeded to blush, look away and mumble something, before saying that it wasn't a good idea. Twilight looked a little determined not to hand me over to the farmer, which only made me wonder again what exactly Applejack had talked to her about in Sugar Cube Corner, considering how Twilight had been acting around me lately. I wasn't sure if I wanted to know. But, surprisingly, when we had asked Rainbow Dash, she had agreed to take care of me for the day. The only issue she had was if I would be alright being left alone and rest or something while she practiced her flying stunts. After Twilight confirmed that it would be alright, Rainbow Dash became my babysitter for the day. Great. So, here I am, resting in the grass while Rainbow Dash flies around through the sky, doing her daring stunts. I was watching her practice, and let me tell you, she's got some moves. The way she twisted and turned in the air, leaving behind a rainbow trail behind her, was a graceful dance that mesmerized me. It was hard not to see why she liked flying so much. I continued to lay there, watching the Pegasus zip through the air. For the next hour or so, she continued to practice, but after a while, she looked like she was getting tired. And when she went to perform one of her stunts, she miscalculated her speed and, with a cry of panic, she flew off course. Trying to regain control of her wings, she tumbled down and flew straight into the Everfree Forest. I winced as the sounds of twigs and branches snapping, rainbows muffled curses, and a yelp of pain reached my ears. Sitting up, I stared in the forest in concern. Twilight warned me of the forest, as well as the creatures that lived in it, and she had stressed that I should never, ever go in the forest alone. After hearing that there were manticores, hydras, and other horrific creatures living in the trees, I couldn't have agreed more. However, Rainbow was currently in the forest alone and probably hurt. I waited a few minutes, hoping she would fly back out. When she failed to emerge, I sighed heavily and stood up. <sighs> These ponies are going to be the death of me. I grumbled as I slowly entered the forest, determined to find the prismatic pegasus and get her out of there. As I ventured through the trees, I couldn't help but notice that despite Twilight's warning, the forest didn't seem that dangerous to me. It felt more like a forest back on Earth, actually, and I half expected to come across a paved road or a lone hunter dressed in their orange hunting gear. After several minutes of searching, my ears picked up some noise further down the path. Picking up the pace, I moved cautiously towards the noise, and soon found a small clearing. Stopping at the edge of the trees, I peeked through the bush and saw Rainbow Dash. 
It was kind of hard to miss her, actually, with her colorful mane and tail. Unfortunately, it looked like she had managed to find some new friends. She was pressed against a small cliff, her back against the rock. Her friends were some strange form of canine creature, but instead of fur and flesh, they seemed to be made out of wood. What? I blinked, staring at the sight before me in confusion. As I watched, Rainbow tried to take to the air, but fell back to the ground with a cry of pain. It appeared she had hurt one of her wings. The appendage was spread open, with a large bruise slowly spreading across its surface, and there were some feathers missing as well. She tried to open the wing, but winced in pain. My eyes drifted to the canines, as I chewed on the inside of my cheek as I eyed them. Wooden wolves. Could these be the timber wolves Twilight was talking about? Movement at the top of the cliff caught my eye, and I looked up. One of the wolves had snuck up above Rainbow and was eyeing her, the hunger clear in its gaze. With a snarl, it jumped down the cliff towards the trap Pegasus. Rainbow sensed that something wasn't right and looked up. Her eyes got bigger as fear flashed across her face. Before she had a chance to react, the timber wolf was on top of her back. She cried out in pain as the wolf's claws dug into her back, its weight and momentum roughing up her injured wing. Moving on instinct, Rainbow whipped her head and rolled to the side, just barely missing the wolf's fangs as it attempted to bite into her neck. Now trapped on her back beneath the wolf, she was looking up at the creature as it loomed above her, tears forming in the corner of her eyes. The wolf leaned down, opening his jaws as it prepared to take a chunk out of the pegasus. Not able to think or move due to fear, Rainbow just closed her eyes and prepared for the end. I had seen enough. Pushing off the ground, I rushed out of my hiding place and into the clearing, sprinting towards the wolves. Max, this has to be the stupidest thing you've done yet. As I drew nearer, the wolf on top of Rainbow stopped and looked up, turning its head towards me. I saw its fiery green eyes widen, but before it could react, I smashed into him, tackling it like a rugby player. The wolf and I fell off Rainbow, our momentum carrying us backwards towards the cliff. One more burst of energy and I slammed the wooden creature into the cliff's face, the sound of wood breaking echoing around the clearing. The wolf howled in pain before he burst apart, bits of wood and plasma raining down on the ground, where it gathered in a heap. Pushing myself off the rock face, I turned and looked around at the rest of the wolves, who were eyeing me warily. Holding up my arms and hands, I spread my legs, lowering my stance, trying to make myself look ready to pounce on the next attacker. I positioned myself above Rainbow Dash, trying to protect her from another surprise attack. Contorting my face into an angry snarl, I flashed my teeth at the wolves, trying to intimidate them. It was all a ruse, however, as my heart was about ready to burst from my chest. Fear gripped me as the wolves slowly began to circle around me in the fallen pegasus. Didn't really think this through. Rainbow had opened her eyes when I had ripped the wolf off of her, and she was currently looking at me with surprise, hope, wonder, fear, and something else. As she looked up at me, her cheeks began to turn pink. Glancing off to the side, she shook her head before trying to stand. Ah, horse apples. She hissed, wincing in pain as she tried to get her hooves underneath her. Now taking my eyes off the wolves, I bent down further, placed a hand on her shoulder, and pushed her down to the ground. She gasped, glaring at me with an angry pout in her face. Hey, what gives? I can fight. She growled, pushing against me. This is nothing. I ain't no damsel in this stress. Ignoring her, I just pressed her back down gently. Tearing my eyes from the wolves, I glanced down at her, giving her a look that said, Stay still, I got this. The last thing I needed right now is to be forced to keep watch on both the wolves and her. Rainbow's ears splayed back. I think she got the message, but I didn't have time to confirm it before one of the wolves decided to rush towards me, taking advantage of my distracted state. Fuck! Snapping my head around, I grabbed the wolf as it leapt up, using its momentum to redirect it over my head and towards the cliff behind me. I winced as it hit the cliff, shattering on impact and crumbling to the ground in a heap of wood. Another wolf jumped at me, this time from the side. Spinning quickly, I kicked out my foot, connecting with the wolf's jaw. Much to my surprise and horror, the wolf's head snapped back and flew clean off, the body landing with a thud in front of me, before it collapsed into a pile of wood. Not very strong, are they? I mused, kicking the pile of sticks away from me. After watching their pack members fail, the other wolves were now slowly circling in front of me, more cautious of approaching. One of them edged forward, growling up at me. I growled back, baring my teeth and hoping that I looked more terrifying than I actually felt. Beneath me, I saw Rainbow watching everything with wide eyes, her jaw agape. She looked quickly from the defeated wolves, then back up at me. 
I didn't know what she was thinking, but whatever it was, it could wait until we were safe. One of the wolves, a large beast with a scar across its muzzle, stepped forward suddenly, howling loudly. He was respectably bigger than the rest, and clearly the pack leader. He scratched the earth, glaring at me. I took a step forward, snarling at the brute as I shifted my stance. The other wolves backed up, giving us room. Oh shit, I thought as I glanced around quickly. Did I just accept the challenge? The Alpha and I began circling each other, but I kept close to Rainbow, just in case another wolf decided to run for her. He growled, lunging at me with his jaws open wide. I looked to the side, narrowly avoiding his attack. As he passed by, I kicked out, hitting his underside. Pain flared through my legs as I yelped. The wolf seemed to be made of stronger wood than the others. Wincing, I staggered back, rubbing at my shin as the wolf circled around again. He leapt forward, again and I leaned back, trying to avoid his gaping maw, which snapped shut just inches in front of my face. <laughs> These ponies are going to be the death of me! Stumbling back, I tried to put some distance between the two of us, all while keeping myself between Rainbow and the wolves. There was no way I could beat this thing on my own. I needed some kind of weapon if I ever hoped to win. Looking around quickly, I didn't see anything that could be used as a makeshift weapon. Returning my attention back to my opponent, I balked as he leapt at me again. I barely had time to bring my arms up before he was upon me. Wood dug into my skin as I snaked a hand under his head, grabbing his throat to keep his jaws from biting into me. Unfortunately, the force of him landing on me caused me to fall backwards. This earned a gasp from Rainbow. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck! I thought as I lay there on my back, struggling with the Alpha on top of me, who was trying his hardest to tear me a new breathing hole in my throat. Freeing my right hand, I threw punch after punch at the wolf, all while trying desperately to hold him off with my left. Wiggling my legs around, I managed to get my feet underneath the wolf, and with a grunt and a push, I forced the large creature off of me. Rolling myself over, I pushed myself up to my knees before forcing myself into a low stance. The wolf had already recovered and was now making his way towards me again. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Rainbow still looking at me. Good. She's still relatively safe. Glancing down at myself, I saw that I had gotten some scrapes from the scuffle, the rough wood of the timber wolf marking my flesh. Nothing serious, however, for which I was lucky. Something just in the edge of my vision caught my attention, and upon turning my head, I noticed a big, thick piece of wood lying nearby. Moving quickly, I scooped the log up and held it firmly in my hands, ready to use my new weapon with extreme prejudice. I had barely brought the weapon up when the Alpha leapt at me again. With an angry snarl, I swung the log with all my might, connecting with the side of the Alpha's head as he soared through the air. A resounding crack echoed through the clearing. <laughs> Knock on wood, you bastard! The wolf went down from the blow, but was back up a moment later, growling at me, his teeth bared. I growled back, feeling more confident now that I had something to defend myself with. The Alpha leapt again, but I smacked him away with the log driving him back. We traded blows, repeating the dance for a little while. The wolf tried to get a hold of me, and I used the log to fend him off. I also managed to attack him a couple of times, trying desperately to find a weak spot. During our bounce, I had gotten more scrapes, as well as a bruise or two, but I had managed to get a couple of good hits on the wolf as well. His bark-like skin cracked in several places. One particularly nasty attack left me with several claw marks on my upper arm, and my blood slowly flowing down it. I was exhausted. But so was the wolf. His tongue hung from his mouth as he panted for air. It seemed we had reached a stalemate, and I had a feeling the wolf knew it. <sighs> Give up already, you bastard. The wolf had just staggered forward another attack when it suddenly stopped, its ears perking up as I looked out to the side. It seemed to scan the forest, looking for something, before turning its attention back to me. It gave a low growl before turning its head and letting a loose howl. The entire pack, the Alpha included, turned and sprinted back towards the edge of the clearing, disappearing into the forest. The Alpha was the last to go, and it looked back at me, glaring with such hatred it made me shiver. The look was clear. We weren't finished with each other. One last growl and it disappeared into the undergrowth. I gazed nervously around at the surrounding forest, a feeling of trepidation rising up in me. I wasn't sure what was out there but if it could make an entire pack of timber wolves run away, I didn't want to stick around. Turning towards Rainbow and walking quickly, I bent down and scooped her up in my arms, carrying her bridal style, being mindful of her wings. This didn't seem to go over well with the injured Pegasus. Hey, I can walk just fine by myself. 
They complain, struggling weakly in my arms. You don't need to carry me. Put me down. I just ignored her and walked hurriedly back into the forest and hopefully back towards the safety of Ponyville. Rainbow continued to protest for several more minutes, wiggling around in my arms. I swear, it's like trying to hold on to an excited puppy. Finally, she stopped struggling and fell silent. Stepping over a root, I took a glance down and saw her looking to the side, a small pink blush on her cheeks. Her forelegs were bent over her chest as she pouted cutely. Why did nature make you ponies so damn cute and adorable? I walked at a pace for a while through the forest, still carrying the pouting rainbow, who was surprisingly lightweight. After several minutes, I felt her shift slightly, snuggling deeper into my arms. Looking down, I saw that she had turned her head and was now resting against my chest, her eyes closed and her cheeks a darker shade of pink. I could feel her good wing twitching slightly, almost as if it wanted to extend. She looked content, and not wanting to wake her, I didn't do anything to disturb her and just walked a little faster. Finally, I saw light peeking in through the edge of the forest, and with a few more steps, we were out. Blinking in the bright sunlight, I looked around and saw that I wasn't far from Fluttershy's cottage. Chewing on the inside of my cheek, I glanced down at Rainbow. It would probably be best if I brought her to Fluttershy. She's sure to have a med kit. Cracking my neck, I turned and started heading in the direction of Fluttershy's. Thank you to my wonderful Patreons, Malice Kindness, Chase the Master, Dreamus Portal, Hyperlink, Jason, HKH4, RK Texture, Nine Game, McCario, Pony Pony Entertainment, Starlight Blaze, and Rain Flicker. My tier 2 is Captain Blue Shadow, Chaotic Mist, The Animated Ghost, DGMX2000, Elemental Wolf, H1 Wolf King, Potato, Mr. Crazy Deacon, Mackenzie McCullis, Nocturne, Papa Lennon, Reed Demer of Dark, Solus Eclipse, Sword Brother Morgan, and Artie Bryant. A large thank you to my previous Titan tiers, Dark Guardian, Danish Dash, and Maverick. And a large thank you to my current ones, User1842, and Silent Titan. I appreciate your guys' support so much, and it means a ton to me. That aside, however, this has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.